Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another interesting episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video, I'm going to answer one of the questions that's been asked in our JMeter uh, playlist. So this is actually a playlist where um, you can learn the begin, I mean, like starting to beginning, uh, sorry, starting to end on how to uh, start with performance testing and how to uh, slowly take each and every single step on how to do the uh, JMeter performance scripting, correlation, parameterization with the, with a web application, with API scripts, and then at the end you can do a smoke test, you can do a load test, and then even you can do the reporting. So uh, I mean, I even covered uh, how to install uh, the JMeter in Windows 11, and that's that where we have discussed about how to increase uh, the jmx size in case if you want to run a powerful load test with like more than thousand or two thousand users so i have discussed all these in this playlist uh but in this video i have got a question uh where uh, the question was like how did you create uh, the summary report and please help to uh, to understand this so in fact this here is one of the video that i have created on uh, how to create the performance test report and uh, here i have discussed about all the steps where uh, uh, I used to add the test summary and uh, the response times and everything is getting covered in this one but let me show you uh, how did I do so coming back to this JMeter so once you complete your test you get to have your summary report or you get to have your aggregate report so from that you can collect the samples so samples are the number of transactions for example like the one they have that I have showed here. Let me just show you this one. So the samples that you see here. So the past, uh, the total number of hits are the samples that you see here. And then you get to see the minimum response times. You get to see the average response times and the maximum response times which I've added here. So you get to see the minimum, uh, maximum, and the average response times. And then you have the error percentage. So for example, if it is like uh, 1%, of the uh, the or if like ten percent of the transaction is failed, then it is like two to three per transactions is failed in this total number of transactions. So that way, you can understand. In that is in JMeter again in new loader and loader you get the exact number, but in here in JMeter you get to uh, know only the numbers in percentage. Say for example, if like, if you get uh, three errors or four errors, you get to see that in percentage and not in numbers. And also you can see the throughput, like how many hits you achieved per minute. So you can add that as well, like in terms of throughput or in terms of hits per second. And coming to this uh, report, so I have added the uh, transaction name. So the transaction name is here. You can add the transaction name. Uh, you can move this past transaction to the last part. So I don't want to stand a deviation for now. I can even move it to here. So I am in this report, uh, which I've added, like how did I create it? The first, the first part here is like for each and every transaction, I get to have the, uh, the transactions, their minimum response time, their average response time, their maximum response time, the number of transactions, the total number of transactions. And if it is failed, then you have to add uh, how many has passed and how many has failed. So that's the, that's the first part of this. And then here in the test summary, uh, the total test duration, you can uh, find it here. This is the total duration of this test, like one minute and 39 seconds. In case if you're running this test for more than like two hours or like more than for one hour, you can get to understand how, what is the total duration of the test. And then uh, for understanding the total users, total virtual users, you can get it in the third group. So here you can see the total number of users that you have used for this test and uh, the total request bus, request sent. So the total request sent, you can get it from this part. So the total number of samples. So here if you see the number 400 is a total number. So just to calculate this one. So if you uh, get to get this many numbers, so that is the total number of uh, requests per second, a percent. And then the environment, you know, uh, which obviously which environment you're going to, you're running, and then what test type are you using for this, uh, whether it's a load test or whether it's a stress test or whether it is a, a smoke or whether it's an endurance test and number of execution is just one. So uh, the very first two call, the tables, the first test summary, you know, how did I created it? From where do I get the information? And then again, the login and browsing, uh, so the transactions, like whatever I have added here, I have explained to you where did I get this one. And then uh, moving on to the next part where you get to see the uh, 
the server details. So this one, uh, you cannot find it in JMeter in case if you have any add-ons or any extensions that has uh, the monitoring capabilities of the servers, then you can collect these or else you can collect these from either from Dynatrace or from uh, uh, AppDynamics or from other tools like Datadog. So whatever tools that has been configured to your uh, application you can collect these minimum CPU utilization, the maximum CPU utilization, the average uh, and the same applies for the memory as well. So you can collect all these information from your app dynamics or any of the app uh, application monitoring tools or in case if you have connected if you have configured your perf mod then you can collect it from there as well so these are some of the ways where you can collect your uh, <coughs> uh, metrics so this is how you can create a report and then coming to the overall analysis this one comes in practice i would say so you have to understand or uh, you have to uh, go through all the results and then comparing with the sla then you have to come up with your analysis, your own analysis, like what is your analysis, what is the expected results and what was the actual results. And then you have to say whether it is good or whether it is bad or whether what kind of improvement does it need and which part of the transactions needs improvement and where does the improvement is really required. So or whether the application is ready to go to the production or does it have to have a no go. So all these uh, part you, yeah, you have to analyze and then you have to add it to the overall analysis. So this is how I have prepared this report and this is how every time you prepare a report. And in case if you get to have more information other than this, you can add that too as well. But make sure you're not um, uh, giving too much of information. So add as much information as the stakeholders required. Don't add too much of information that will uh, make your stakeholders to ask you more questions with more clarifications. So the better you give, the 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 uh, good quality of results you give will be always in a better way. Um, yeah, that's how I create the, the the analysis report at the end of the test. And same applies for your endurance test as well. Only that duration gets changed, the virtual users gets changed. And in case if you have like multiple users uh, load test, then you have to have a comparison of the report as well. In fact, I'm planning to uh, create a separate uh, a set of uh, videos, same we wanted it for JMeter for new load as well. So in case if you have interested, please do comment in the comment section and I'm going to prepare, start preparing it uh, very soon. And uh, in that, we'll see more details, more uh, uh, ways of uh, exploring the reports. So that's that's in the uh, progress. And yeah, with that, I come to an end of this video. And yeah, one more thing, uh, uh, we are having our JMeter plus GitLab integration uh, videos uh, training that has been uh, completed and uh, I will share that video with you very soon. Uh, yep, with that I come to the end of this video and I definitely believe this video would be very useful to you. Yep, and before that, yeah, I'll, I'll just have to uh, add one more thing. So in case uh, you can have like, I have a question that whether do I only have only this option or uh, do I have any option to get these results? Yes, there is one more option where you can collect these results as well. That is in the HTML report format. So in case if I go to the index.html, in fact, I have created separate videos on that as well, like how to create the HTML reports once you are creating or uh, doing uh, running your test or after you complete your test also, you can create your HTML report. That uh, demo also has been added to the uh, this playlist. You can watch that. And if you go to this dashboard, you can see uh, the test result, the source file, the test duration and low, what time does it start and what time does it end? And what is the request summary, how many has passed and how many has failed? So if this test was like past 100%, you can add this report as well. And in coming to the statistics, you can see the samples, which is the total number of transactions. You can see the fail numbers. Yep. In the JMeter, you cannot see the numbers, but here in the HTML report, you can see the numbers. That's one good thing which I would say, and then you can collect the minimum response time, the average response time, the maximum response time, and even the percentile as well. So that's a very good thing because you can uh, get to know the percentile because some of the clients or some of the stakeholders might want to know the 90th, the 95th percentile, the 99th percentile. So we can collect those information. And if you do not know what is a percentile, I have created a separate video on that in both English and Tamil. Uh, you can watch that video as well. I'll have cl clearly given a demo on what is percentile, how does it is getting calculated, and how important is uh, the percentile uh, report. And then here you can collect the top errors, like what are the top errors by the samplers. And then not only these, you have also get to have the charts over time, charts and uh, response over time. So in fact, this is a very small test, so you, can, you do not see much. But in fact, if you have uh, a long test, or like for two hours, you can get to see a lot of numbers, a lot of color ch colorful charts and then response time or percentile time and then active threads over time. So in fact, I'll create another uh, 
video on this, like how does how to watch these, uh, get to see all the graphs and then active threads over time. And then you get to see the bytes throughput over time and then latency is over time. So you can add all these reports, but make sure you are able to answer the questions if someone is asking you, like, why did you add this? And uh, what is the uh, the importance of showing this? Okay. And then the throughput. So here you can show the hits per second, like how many hits per second has been reached during the test. And then the response time. So here you can see, uh, it's, it's, I mean, like, why, why do we need to add the graph? So these graphs will clearly show you what is the, uh, the bottleneck. So for example, in case, if you see here, everything was working fine, but one of the transaction has high response time. So this, when you see it in the table, you might not have noticed, but when you see it in the graph, it is very evident that you can find that, okay, there are some issues and that has to be sorted out. And so that's the reason we have to add these graphs and then we have the response time overview and we have a time versus threads, like what, what time, how many threads are running and what time uh, these threads are getting hits. And then the response time distribution. So this is also another way where you can show like which particular response took more amount of response times. And you have the custom graphs, so what time graph. And yeah, in case if you add like more listeners, then you get to have more graphs. So that's the way where you can add more value to your report and results because uh, just by giving these uh, graphs and reports, you can very well tell the stakeholders that whether everything's good or something has to be improved for a better performance. So yep, with that I come to an end uh, for a definite end of this video. Uh, and yep, thank you so much for watching this video. And so until I meet you in my in our next videos, bye bye from Asin Shanmugam and your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. Take care and bye bye.